Apostle Malor. Mm. <laughs> my name is El no. <laughs> no, my name is El Barner, and you're watching House of Malor. Hostels. <laughs> my name is El Barner, and you're watching HostelMalor.com. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get a refill? Can I get a refill? Can I get a refill? Hey guys, it is Hasta Malor. I am here with E to the LL, E to the VZ, for she's my niece. Did you see her on BET? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so let's jump into the interview. Okay. I know both of your parents are songwriters. Did yes. you feel pressured to jump into the music industry? Not at all. They they pretty much was like, do whatever you want to do. So how did you how did you start? Did you just start singing around the house or? Started singing around the house. Uh, just was always ear hustling, like when they were singing or writing just be at the door like what's going on you know right. i'm glad you didn't say like most people say uh, i started in the church you'd be like uh -uh, turn the jesus off we just <laughs> <laughs> i didn't start in church so you didn't start in church did you? well i didn't start in church but i did sing in church and I, i'll never forget the first time i had a solo in church and when i saw how people reacted that's the first time i felt the the stage thing like oh shoot this is what happens when you're a singer right. and I was very young so I think that might have hooked me right. so. they had some input on your debut album that's coming out perfectly imperfect mm -hmm. can you tell us more about it yeah it's a, it's a beautiful album uh, the majority of it is two producers pop and oak um, they produce Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay. They produce Only Want to Give It to You. So you get a really streamlined sound. Like not, oh, this, this, that, and that, and that. It's like a whole story, a whole body of work. All different topics from so fly to refill. We can fool me. So do we have any uh, due date for the album? Well, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Spring. Spring. What about collaborations? No, none other than J. Cole, actually. Right. Talking about Only Want to Give It to You, how was it working with J. Cole? It was great. We actually knew each other before we got signed. But he went to St. John's, I went to NYU, so it was like really natural. The collaboration, and you can see it in the video. It's cool. What do you want to give to him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you want to give to anybody? Yeah, to him, nothing. No offense. That's my like my brother. Uh, to anybody, you have to find out. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> Any dream collaboration that you have with oh, anybody? Yeah. Um, Andre 3000, Kanye, uh, Adele. Miguel, mm, there's a lot. I can't think of them all, but a lot. All right. Um, we must talk about the passing of the late Whitney Houston. How did you hear about it? How, what was your initial reaction? Well, I was I was at a photo shoot for Team Vogue, and I got in the car on my way to the Roots Grammy Jam sound check, which is like okay, it's the most huge moment for me. This is L.A. Grammy week. Right. Everybody's gonna be there. We're doing only want to give it to you. I'm excited and my manager turns to me and says uh, Whitney Houston just died and I just Lost it. I lost it when I got to the rehearsal Dragged myself on stage quest like the, I, we were playing the song all slow and it was just it was not there And I started to walk I walked off stage and I walked back on and I said what if we do saving all my love and that's where that came about. I don't know if you saw it. Um, it's all over the internet. Uh, but Whitney Houston, like I said tonight, is the reason why I'm a singer. My first idol, my biggest idol ever, like to many boys, Michael Jackson, that was Whitney was to me. And uh, I don't even, it's still, still processing, you know. To begin, I just found my man and another man. I wouldn't categorize your music as the normal, typical R&B. Do you feel, like, pressured to settle? No, I don't feel pressured to do nothing. And I, I think that's why people gravitate toward my music, because I'm all about individuality, about sense of self. I'm, I'm going to do it. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it my way. 
and that's now and forever. It's not worth it any other way, you know. So. All right. You uh, do a lot of songwriting your own self. Do you prefer that over singing, or, or are you equally? Uh, for me, it's it's different because I'm I am a songwriter, but I haven't actually written for other people yet. So all the songs on my album, mixtape, everything you hear me singing, I wrote, and that just comes along with like. I got a story to tell. I go through things. I watch people go through things. And I only know how to do it by writing songs. Like, I only know how to express it that way. So I'm very excited to be able to pull. I think I'm good at pulling emotion out of people. And if I were to write with, for someone else, I would want to write with them. We had a reader question. This is from at Ronald Matters. He said, what's your take on downloading music and how will you ensure that your music is bought and not illegally downloaded? Well, my take on illegal downloads is that people want to pay for quality. People, I think that everyone says, oh, because of Napster, this and that. But the quality of music has significantly downgraded in right. over the years and that's that is what it is back in the day you bought an album you listened from track one to 15 or whatever it was and it was real and it was like now it's it's not the same level of quality i think and i hope that people buy my records because they love them and they love me and if they don't that you know it's too bad if i had no cellulite big breast and pockets Now, I downloaded your com conversational <laughs> Lush mixtape. I know you see me out there singing like the yeah. <laughs> majority of the songs. Yeah. How did the mixtape come about? And why did you put so many good songs like, why did they like Go and, you know, So Fly? And why did you put all those good songs, Feel Like a Woman? Well, believe it or not, a lot of the songs on the mixtape did not make the album. So I've had the reverse problem. Like, it wasn't that I had to find more songs, I had to actually cut songs. That's how good the album is. I'm not just tooting my horn, but. So the uh, the mixtape, I mean, I needed something to bridge the gap. Only want to give it to you. Needed to give the people more. And and the mixtape was so fun because it's different from the album. The album is like polished and this whole big production. A mixtape, you can do songs like WTF right. and just have fun and talk about whatever. And the album was very much more thought out and planned. And it took me a year. And the mixtape. I did in like two weeks, three weeks. So. All right. What's your favorite song off the mixtape? Uh, it's between WTF and Ghost. Definitely. Doesn't what about Go? I mean, me and my sister, oh, we were saying we love it so much. You didn't sing. You didn't sing any of it. Can you give us like a little <laughs> of Go? Uh, I wanna grab on your feet and make a fool of myself and beg you desperately to say you'll never leave. Be able rationally, but instead I'll say, wait, no, baby, baby, please don't. Oh, I was gonna fail. <laughs> <laughs> So going along, I know So Fly, is it going to be an actual album even though it's still on the mixtape? Yes, definitely. All right, and what about uh, Refill? I know was, I was talking to some, one of your head people from the label, and they were saying that you was trying to decide if Refill was the next single. Is it confirmed? It is confirmed. All right, okay. And how are you enjoying the tour with Estelle and Stacey Barth and Luke James? I am loving it. I, it's a dream tour. First tour, everybody is so humble and, and nice and loving and full of energy. I've learned so much from Estelle. She's a vet and just her energy and how she connects with the audience is it's definitely something to take notes And since you said refill is the next single can we expect the video once the tour is finished? Yes, I'm shooting the video on Friday What about the treatment? You, the treatment? Can you say anything about it? I can tell you it's about a night in New York City that one would never forget All right. 
And to wrap up the interview, we have five questions, just five random questions, just be as honest as you can. Okay. Um, in one of your songs, you said you have a beautiful soul, only four people know. Who are the four people? My mom, my dad, my nana, and my little brother. <laughs> <laughs> are you single? Yes. Is this all your hair? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite singer? Whitney Houston. Which singer out there do you uh, feel... Never mind, I want that question. <laughs> what is your favorite hobby? Sewing. I can't even... <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> I think <Okay>. I... <laughs> All right. And your favorite city? Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> Why? Huh? Lies. <laughs> Lies. New York. Okay, New York. Brooklyn. All right. Actually, Brooklyn is my favorite city. All right. We wanna... I love Atlanta. I do. I need to come back and really, like, get a feel for it. Because I've been here, like, one day. The last time I was out here, I was working on the album way out in Bubble F. And I don't know where I was. Hot House of what? Hostel of Lord. The one that tweeted her and she retweeted it when I said that she don't tweet her followers back and she sent her goons on me. That was you! Oh my god, I didn't even send them. They are they attacked me, so <laughs> well I will follow you, okay? Alright, so say it one more house of Malor House Malor Okay. Malor. What is Malor? Malore. Malore for what? No, like what? For what? Yo, Je parle français? Oh, right. Yeah, baby. Nobody <laughs> I be on that Rosetta Stone in my downtime. Like, for real. They be like, what are you doing? Okay. Mmm. Hostel Malore. Mmm. <laughs> My name is El No, <laughs> no. My name is El Barner, and you're watching House of Malor. Hostel. <laughs> My name is El Barner, and you're watching Hostel Yeah.